Picking up on destiny word. Eternal blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. And so the moment somebody follows Jesus, what he's saying is that everything about me is passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And so if there is any family handwriting or there is any limitation in my family that made me unable or unable to assess certain dimensions of faith, as long as I am in Christ, I am a new creature, that all things are passed away. And God watches over my new creature to perform. The Shepherd series is being a blessing to you and your life has been challenged and transformed. Um, you now understand why David would say the Lord is his shepherd and he shall not want. Psalm 23 is coming alive unto you. Um, today we are going to go straight into the word even as we try to exegete why he said he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He is the one that maketh us lie down. And stay tuned even as we get into the service and I know your life is never going to be the same again. Bless you. Did you come with your Bibles? Could you please lift up your Bible and say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I will become what it says I can become. I will go where it says I can go. I will achieve what it says I can achieve. Then slap your chest and say, I am a believer. You can do it again, say, I am a believer. If the Bible is yours, I want us to do what we did. We have been doing about for the past um, couple of weeks. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. So without you even opening your Bible, we want to do Psalm 23 together. The ancient practice of communal reading or corporate reading is long lost. But I want us to read together any, any, any version you are accustomed to. Whether King James, whether NIV, whether English Standard Version, any of the versions you have. Psalm 23, let's do it together. The Lord is, I show. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Amen. It's okay, don't add, restore it to my soul. That might be for the next two weeks. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we know that the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will abide forever. We pray this morning, that you give us a word that works. Anoint these lips of clay, O oh God, make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody's life. To the end, if you give us a sure word that works, our voices will be lifted and we will give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look for somebody and tell the person, he makes me to lie down. Three people tell them, he maketh me to lie down. Amen. He maketh me to lie down. He maketh me to lie down. Um, we've sojourned in the book of Psalm 23 over the past couple of weeks, and I think that we've been able to bring out some of the things that are important to the test. But if you recall, everybody throughout scripture, before David even came, there are many metaphors that are being used to describe God. In some instances, God has been described as a warrior. People had an encounter with God and they called him Jehovah El Gibor, which means the God uh, that sits in the heavens is not only there, but he comes down and fights for his people. Apart from that, there are other instances where God will provide. And so Abraham will meet this God. And when Abraham was in need and God will make provision for him, he will call him Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord God who is able to provide for his people. And so there are many of those instances that God has been used as a banner or described as a banner, been described as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who is a banner, the Lord that... You can make him your banner when you are in any battle or you are under any attack or you are going into any confrontation. You can make him your banner. The flag that you wave over your life, when everybody sees you, knows where you are coming from. In other instances, he has been termed as the Makadish Kemi. The Lord who is your sanctifier. That when people are going through stuff and they get through 
places and the, just like the high priest called um, um, Joshua when he was standing before God to minister unto the people. And the Bible says that the devil had come and said that this person cannot, you cannot listen to this person. God showed up and said, I am his makadish kemi, I am his sanctifier. That is to mean that the God that you serve when you go through things and the enemy wants to lay an accusation over your life, God says, I have what it takes to sanctify people that I have purchased. The blood does not only cleanse us, it also sanctifies for a good work. God is not only a sanctifier, he's also called the Tzikenu, which means the God who is your righteousness. And so not only does he sanctify, he makes things right. And so there are many metaphors that have been used to describe this kind of God, but none of these metaphors that are used in the Bible can wholly explain who he is. Actually, if you think about God as only a king, you forget that he is also a God who is a friend. If you think about God as only um, the God of justice, you also forget that he's also a God of mercy. And so if you think about God in any particular model, you, you reduce God, you get into what we call, you, you skyrocket or you catapult yourself into um, the reductionistic theological embolism. You get yourself into places whereby you are not able to articulate the mind of God into realms or places where God really deserves to be. Because you describe God as, you put God in a subset of who he is. He is bigger than being just a king. He is bigger than being just a God. That people call his God. Because there are many gods, but there is no other word. That is why when Moses had encountered him and Moses had asked, when I go and I meet the people and they ask, who should I say sent me? He said, I, I can't give a complete definition that will make sense in your human term or language. But when they ask you who sent you, tell him, tell them that the I am that I am sent you. Because there is nothing that can explain me away. Now, in spite of all these lofty accolades, these high standards, these pedestals that we try to put God on, David moves the argument into a more intimate relationship. He's now saying that the God that everybody knows that when he speaks mountains will skip like rams and when he shows up Jordan will flee backwards and when he shows up the, the Red Sea can part into two. When, when he shows up Jordan will part into two. They will dry up and let the people of God walk their, their, their in or walk through. David is saying that this God is not only that God who lives there but he's also my shepherd. He moves it into more of a more intimate, is the most intimate metaphors that has ever been used to describe this God. That the Lord God who is omnipotent, omniscient, the Lord God who is almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-gracious God can also be my shepherd. He's trying to describe his relationship with God. What David is saying is that no matter how you see God, he is still, you can still relate to him. No matter how lofty, how high you think God is, you can still relate with God. He's high, he is mighty, he is lifted, he is a great God, he's a good God, he's the most powerful that you can ever imagine, and yet you can still relate with him. And David moved the argument and saying it to you the previous meetings that if the subject of the whole passage or chapter is the Lord, then the most sublime word ever used there is my. That is not just the Lord who is there, but he is my shepherd. He's, he's more of a possessive pronoun. He's not just there. He's mine. That God is mine. He, he is with me. He fights for me. He stands with me. Wherever I go, he is my shepherd. He, he leads me. He is there for me. Wherever I go, he does not allow me to go through things alone. That is a kind of relationship that David is trying to push out there. He's saying that this God that you serve, when you go through water, he's with you. When you go through fire, he's with you. No matter where you find yourself, God will never leave you alone. Actually, your mother and your father can forsake you, but this God will never forsake you. That is what David is saying, that he is mine. I walk with him. He does not desert me. He does not abandon me. And so when I go through anything, God is there with me. 
That is the kind of conviction David wants us to get to. Where, that is the place where David wants us to find ourselves that whenever we are with God, as long as we are for God, as long as God remains our shepherd, he will never leave us alone. You might go through the dark stages of life, the bad patches of life, but as long as God remains your shepherd, he will never leave you alone. He's there with you. He will be there for you. He stands with you. He stays with you. No, even if you don't see him, he's there. That's what David is saying. David is saying that because the one who is omnipotent, omniscient, the one who is all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful, the almighty God is my shepherd, the one who is with me, then I will lack nothing. There is no way you can be with the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills and still be in lack. You cannot walk with this God and be deprived of things that will aid your movement or your sojourn in this life. As long as he remains your shepherd, he supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory. As long as God remains your shepherd, he's able to supply and provide. He's able to be not just a gyre for Abraham, he's also able to become your gyre. David is saying that he made provisions for the people of old and he can still make provision for us in our times. I don't know about you, but there are a few of us who have that conviction in our hearts that this God that we serve, even though things might not look all that good right now, as long as he remains our shepherd, he will still come through and make provisions for us. He will still come through and supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. May the Lord God who is able to supply needs, the God who says that as long as I remain your shepherd, you shall lack. Look at somebody and say, I shall lack nothing. Look at another and say, I shall lack nothing. Now, if you now move the argument a bit deeper, then you realize that it is not only about his material needs, but everything that was of concern to the sheep, the shepherd is there to provide. The shepherd acts, he acts as a guide, he acts as a physician. When any of the sheep is not feeling too well, it is the shepherd's responsibility to administer healing or be the physician for the sheep now that is to mean that he is not only saying that materially uh, you will lack nothing but anything to do with yourself he's saying that as long as the lord is my shepherd i shall lack nothing it means that whatever thing that can be of concern to you god says i will take care of it i pray that god will take care of everything that is of concern to your life everything that is of importance to your life whatever thing that your life requires to be able to move to the dimensions or place where God wants you to get to I pray right now in the name that is above every other name that Jesus will show up and supply all your needs according to his riches and glory whatever thing that you will require there are a few of you that are catching this but let me say this when the Lord remains your shepherd Nothing is missing from your life and nothing is broken. That is to mean that you get the totality of whatever thing God is able to afford. Whatever thing that God is able to afford, whatever thing that God can bring to you, whatever thing that God can supply you with, I pray in the name of Jesus that even if the windows of the heavens are supposed to be open, said that there will be no room for you to contain, let the windows of the heavens be open for you, that God will bring to you much more than you can ever ask or think. The Bible says, eyes have not seen or ears heard. Am I talking to somebody? Neither has it ever entered into the heart of a man. The things that God has destined for those that love him and because you are a lover of God let God open the windows of the heavens and bring to you above beyond and above all that you can ever imagine think or even ask him to do I sense the sound of abundance of rain God is able to supply and push to you what will make you lack nothing he said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall lack nothing he will fill me he will give me all that I need everything that I need he will supply he was talking about God's ability to supply 
whatever thing that is of concern to the sheep, the shepherd supplies. And so he was talking about the fact that God is able to cause you to have more than you can take. God's supply exceeds your intake. God talks about, you read, you get to that point where we'll get to in the subsequent um, sessions that your cup runs over. It means that no matter your cup, he can still exceed it. God has what it takes to bring you the overflow. And that is why the next verse is very important. After you've lacked nothing, he said you will lack nothing. It means that whatever I need, he supplies. Whatever I need, he provides. If I need great people, if I need good people to hold my hands, to lead me to great places, God says I will supply that need. You will lack nothing. If you need to have contact with good people, God says you will lack nothing. If you need good health, God says you will lack nothing. If you need good contacts, God says you will lack nothing. God is talking about the fact that whatever thing that you require to be able to fulfill destiny, I can supply it such that you will lack Come on, give three people a high if I tell them I will lack nothing. Before I preach to you what I, ha- I came to talk to you today about, look for three people and tell them God says I will lack nothing. Look at three people, tell them God said I will lack nothing. Now that means that prophetically if there is any lack in your life, it is an aberration of the divine protocol. If there is anything called lack in your life, it is in the wrong place with the wrong person. Therefore, I speak right now over your life. Whatever thing is called lack, in the name of Jesus, can I pray for somebody who believes in God? Anything called lack in your life, we speak the word of God and we banish it from your life completely. In the name of Jesus, whatever thing you are lacking, this is what God says, that you will lack Nothing. As long as the thing has a name, you can lack it. If I need an open door, the open door is a thing. And I can lack that thing. Anything that has been closed up on you, we pray in the name of Jesus that even as the Bible says that you shall lack nothing, let it be so unto you. Let it be so unto you according to the word of God. Watch the scripture even as it unfolds. He said, because he is my shepherd, I can move into lack. If you need children, God says you will lack nothing. If you need breakthrough, God says you will lack nothing. If you need an open door, God says you will lack nothing. If you need financial advancement, God said you will. You know, sometimes it's confusing to say that. But you get into scripture and you realize that everybody that walked with God, when the going got tough, God stepped in. Because covenant brings provision. Without covenant, there is no providence. So when there is any need on the life of a child of God, God does not look at the person, he looks at the covenant. When God looks at the covenant he has with the person, God moves from just being the God they know to the performer. The song that Donna was singing says that he will perform. The reason, the only reason why God performs is because there is a covenant with you. Not because you are holy. Not because you are perfect. Perfection is something nobody can attain. Not only, not because you are perfect, not because you are holy, but because there is a covenant that exists between you and him. Not through your own handwriting, but through the ink of the blood. So when he sees you through the lens of the blood, he remembers his promises and covenant over your life. And God watches over that word over you and he performs. May the Lord perform whatever word he has spoken over. Can I speak to a few of you who believe in God? Maybe there are only 500 people in this place, maybe a thousand. But whoever you are, may God perform whatever. 
God performs not because of human act, but because of the divine act. It is in God's divinity to perform. It is not in his compassionate outlook towards man. Either than that, he'll do things for everybody. His divine nature makes him selective. He selects people on the base of grace. What causes grace to be seen is a covenant. The covenant is written through the ink of the blood. The blood is the eternal blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. And so the moment somebody follows Jesus, what he's saying is that everything about me is passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And so if there is any family handwriting or there is any limitation in my family that made me unable or unable to assess certain dimensions of faith, as long as I am in Christ, I am a new creature. The old things are passed away. And God watches over my new creature to perform for me. Watch this. Because I lack nothing, then this morning's sermon starts. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The sheep does not sleep to eat. The sheep, when the sheep wants to graze or eat, it doesn't lie down. It stands to eat. The sheep only lies down after it is full and it wants to ruminate. It, it doesn't stand, it doesn't lie down to eat. The pastures are green. It means they are fertile. He has prospered, but he is lying down. Now what he's saying is that when God becomes your shepherd, he gives you permanency in prosperity. Let, let me try to rewind and help you understand some of these things. The sheep, will, the moment you see the sheep lying down, it means the sheep is full. The sheep is supposed to be so full. And it makes sense because in the preceding verse, the sheep lacks nothing. So the sheep is so full that right now in prosperity, the sheep can have peace. The sheep will not lie down when it is being chased. The sheep will not lie down when it's, it is under attack. The sheep will not lie down when it feels threatened. The only time the sheep will lie down is when it finds peace. Do you know that when God blesses you, he gives you peace all around you as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So does God surround his people. Wherever God wants to land you, may the Lord grant you peace. You are not ready for this. Let me try and push the... So he maketh me to lie down. Not after I've eaten and I'm full, I move to a dry place to ruminate. No. Where there is abundance in that green pastures, instead of the sheep moving out of the green pasture zone to ruminate, it lies therein. What he's saying is that there is constant supply. When the Lord is your shepherd, there is constant whatever thing that you will need in life. Let there be a constant supply, whether it's of grace or of need. Let there be. Look at three people. Give them a high five. Tell them there is going to be constant supply. God will bring me constant supply. Look at somebody and say constant supply. The sheep will lie in the green pastures. So when it needs greens again, it doesn't have to travel. The pastures are all. God surrounds his people with whatever thing they will require. May God surround you in 2017 with whatever thing that you will require to fulfill destiny. So when the sheep feels hungry, it doesn't need to travel. It just has to 
open its mouth wide and there will be a filling. All that the sheep ought to do is to just check around. Labor reduced. When the Lord is your shepherd, he reduces labor and brings you results. May the Lord God, you see, when the Lord is your shepherd, what really happens is he replaces labor with favor. He replaces labor. Look at somebody and say, he will replace my labor with favor. Come on, look at another and say, he will replace my labor with favor. Can you look for somebody else and say, neighbor, my God, your God, our God will replace your labor with favor. Every labor of yours is about to experience divine favor. May that be your portion if you find yourself in this place. May that be your All too soon, our time is up. I believe that it has been a blessing to you. Your life has been challenged. You've been transformed. There has been a renewal of your mind. You can now understand why David um, said that the Lord is his shepherd and he shall not want. Especially why he said he maketh him to lie down in green pastures. I believe that it's been a blessing to you. Now, if you have never given your life to Christ or you gave your life to Christ some time ago and you had backslidden, and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, I want to give you a great opportunity to do that rededication. You can say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I know that it was because of me that you came to die. Forgive me of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness and write my name in your book of life so that when you come again, I will not be a castaway. Amen. Now, if you said this prayer, I can guarantee you that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Your sins are totally forgiven. Therefore, look for a Bible-believing church anywhere the name of Jesus is being preached and the unadulterated word of God is being propagated. You go there, grow there, be mentored there. And I believe that your life is never going to be the same again. However, if you find yourself anywhere around the Naked Sounds, anywhere that our branches are, whether it's in East Lake or Adenta or on one of the Copenhagen Road, you can come and let us, let us fellowship together. I believe that your life is going to be challenged even as we take this walk and grow in the faith. God bless and see you next week. Bye.